In today's video, we're going to be having a look at Adono's latest tag reader for Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. If you're a member of the Home Assistant forums or any of the other Home Assistant pages, then you will have definitely seen this little tag reader popping up at some point. It's designed and created by Adono and this particular model is the latest version, also known as the sandwich version. Inside the tag reader, it's powered by a D1 Mini and a PN532 sensor and this is all tied together using some ESP32 software and that then gets bundled into ESP Home and from ESP Home, we can pass it straight into Home Assistant and that's where the magic happens. If you're picking up the sandwich edition of the tag reader, then you'll be getting this custom created PCB with all the parts and components attached to it this is a great improvement over the original and it's got a nice little compact design. It's also pre-flashed with the ESP software, so it's pretty much just plug and play. If you weren't aware, Home Assistant has a handy little feature that allows us to set up and create our own NFC tags and also QR codes. And essentially, that's where this little tag reader comes in. We're going to be able to use this tag reader to not only create our own NFC tags, but also read them and then run our own scripts and automations based on these events. A massive thank you to Adono for sending me this unit of the tag reader. I have been festering you for a long time to get one of these. And if you are interested in getting your hands on one of these, you can pick them up directly from Adono's online store and they come in a wide range of different colours and finishes. If you do opt to pick up one of these pre-assembled models, not only are you going to get a unit that's already been tested so you can be confident it works, you're also going to get a set of instructions that tell you exactly how to set it up and also a little NFC fob and an NFC card. Alternatively, if you're more of a DIY person and you like to tinker with these yourself, then Adono actually has created a set of instructions where you can actually buy all the parts that you need and you can actually assemble these yourself. The links for all of those things will all be in the description below, so if you are interested, go and check them out. Back to the tag reader then. The setup for the tag reader is super simple and if you are familiar with other ESP devices, this will just be a breeze for you. It's powered by a USB-C cable and you just simply plug that in and once you do that, it will start broadcasting its own Wi-Fi network. You then just simply connect to this network and that will just hand over your Wi-Fi credentials to the device and once you do that, the device will connect your network and you should be able to see it in Home Assistant. The tag reader should automatically be detected by your Home Assistant, but if for example you've got your network split up into multiple parts and you've got say an IoT network, you'll have to manually add this and to do that you just click add integration, choose ESP Home, then enter the IP address for your tag reader. With all of that done, you should now be able to see the tag reader in Home Assistant and you should have access to a few different controls and configuration options. You can do things like turn on the tag reader LED and also turn on and off the buzzer sound. To get started with the tag reader, you just simply hold up an NFC card against the reader. It will then scan it and it will add that tag's ID to a list of known IDs. And to make this easy for yourself, once you've got that ID in Home Assistant, if you rename the ID to a friendly name, you'll always know what it is and it just makes it easier to actually control the tags and automate them. I'm not really sure what it is, but there is something really fun about scanning something and having that run an automation that affects and changes your house in a certain way. And there is a, literally a ton of different use cases and different things that you could do with this thing. My main use case for the tag reader was to create a simplistic media controller that my two year old can use. I printed some NFC cards with some custom images of some of her favorite TV programs. And now when she holds them up to the tag reader, it will just automatically start playing those things on the TV. Scanning one of those tags will run an automation that will first turn on the TV, then it'll open up the file locally or on whatever streaming platform it's on, like Disney Plus or Netflix, and then just start playing. To add a little bit of extra functionality to those cards, I created a little toggle helper in Home Assistant called Music Mode, and when Music Mode's on, if you scan one of those cards, instead of playing the film or bit of program or whatever it is on the TV, it instead plays some music on whatever speakers are in that room. And of course, there is a parent override for all of those things because this is what we envision happening. But in practice, this is pretty much what happens. All of my code for the media controller tag should all be in the description below, so feel free to just copy and paste those. Another use case that I have for the tag reader is to combine it with my Alarmo system. And what's cool about this is you can use a tag to arm and disarm the alarm and this might be really useful if you've got some friends or guests coming over that might be watching your house or maybe using your house and they're not used to your alarm system. So that's just a nice quick way for them to get in and arm and disarm the alarm. If you're after a little more inspiration or want some more ideas and use cases for things that you can do with the tag reader, then previously I created a video on some automations that you could do with NFC stickers. Now that video is quite old and really bad, 
So I'll have them listed here for the different use cases, but if you want them in a bit more detail, then check out that old video. In my use cases and in my testing, I've primarily been using the reader with some custom printed NFC cards, the NFC fob, an NFC ring, and also some NFC stickers. This current version of the tag reader needs power supplied by a USB-C cable in order to operate, but I do know that Adono is working on a newer version that's going to be battery based, and I think that's what he said, and I think it was public knowledge, maybe. I, I hope he's making one. Just imagine all the extra crazy things you could do with a tag reader if it was wireless. If you were wondering about the performance of the tag reader, just generally scanning tags is super quick. There can be a bit of a slowdown sometimes if you're trying to run a big automation, but that's mainly dependent on the automation you're running. In my examples of triggering TV based automations, things like running files locally and using Netflix performed a lot faster than trying to launch things on Disney+. Plus. But again, it depends on the services you're trying to run. The surface area for the NFC module is pretty good too. So far, all of the tags and little devices that I've used haven't had any problems registering or being picked up by the tag reader. If you are looking to purchase some tags and devices for the reader, do first check that they are compatible with the PN532 module. Overall, this is a fantastic little device and I love this marble and blue theme. If you do opt to pick up one of the pre-made ones, you're going to instantly get access to an out-of-the-box solution and you can just start creating some crazy automations and doing some weird and wonderful things. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at the tag reader for Home Assistant. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning on getting one of these and what you're actually going to do if you do get one. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. And as always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you want to check out some other cool things that you can add to your Home Assistant, then check out this video just here. Or if you want to see some other Home Assistant-y type things, then check out this one here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.